we find that the alpha bromides you can make from um, the halogenation reaction under acidic conditions can be quite useful. So let's say we have this alpha bromide. Uh, just to recap, the way you would make this, we would start with this corresponding aldehyde, and you could use Br2 and acetic acid to brominate at the alpha position. Now, once we have this alpha bromide, if you treat this to um, a base like pyridine, and heat it up a little bit, so don't forget the structure of pyridine, you have the nitrogen with a lone pair, and what this does is it does an elimination reaction. And if you think back to organic two, you might remember the E2 elimination. So here's our alpha bromide. At the beta carbon, we have hydrogens. I'm just gonna draw one of those in. And what the pyridine can do as a base, take that proton and do the elimination. So we get this pyridinium salt plus an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. And we know those are very, very useful in synthesis. Um, they're often used for conjugate addition reactions. Which we'll look at one here in just a second. Uh, for this reaction, what the driving force behind this is in the elimination, specifically the fact that you're forming a conjugated system. So this new alpha beta double bond you form is in conjugation with the carbonyl. So to review just one reaction you know that you can do with these alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls, remember cuprate chemistry. So if we take this compound we made and say we want a methyl group at the beta position, we can use methyl cuprate, so CH32CULI, and we'll just follow that with a water workup that will put a methyl group at the beta position. So in terms of synthesis, keep this reaction sequence kind of in your back pocket. So if you're starting with some carbonyl compound, and you need to add something at the beta position, or you can potentially brominate, eliminate, and then add that group by a cuprate.